morning boys and girls welcome once again to youth sunday school we like to say thank you to everyone who have joined us this morning to for the study of god's word we trust that each of you have had a blessed week and that you are looking forward to attending church on tomorrow i would like to personally invite each of you to join us at bethel baptist church tomorrow as we celebrate youth day 2021 we're excited and we're looking forward to celebrating our annual Youth Day. And we're asking our Bethel family to please support us by wearing your favorite Youth Day t-shirt. We would appreciate that very much. So we look forward to seeing each of you on tomorrow. As always, let us begin with the word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come this morning with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts. Thanking you, Father, for blessing us to see another day. We thank you, God, for taking care of us throughout the night. Thank you for blessing us, O oh God, with a good night's rest. And then early this morning, you touched us with a finger of love, and you enabled us to arise and to see a new day. And we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for giving us a mind to come together one more time in your name. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the use and activities of our limbs. Thank you for giving us a mind to acknowledge that you are God, and besides you, there is no other God. We come, Lord, thanking you for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. You have been so good to us, Lord, and we thank you, Father God. We just can't thank you enough, Father God. Help us, Lord, to live our lives to show you that we appreciate all that you have done, all that you're doing right now, and all that you're going to do for us, Lord. We come this morning thanking you for each person that has joined us this morning for the study of your holy word. For in this day and time, Lord, we truly need a word from you. We thank you, God, for this teaching opportunity. We ask that you would just bless us, Lord God. We pray that your Holy Spirit will lead, God, and direct us. We pray that you would use us, Lord, that someone will be blessed by the study of your word. We pray, oh God, for our pastor this morning. We pray for his pastor, for his family. We pray for Bethel Church family, Lord. We pray for all pastors and all churches, oh God, that are open in your name. We pray for this world, Lord God. We pray for our world leaders. We pray for our state, our city. And we pray that you bless each leader, oh God, that they will seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit in every decision that needs to be made, Lord. We love you, oh God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died that we may have eternal life. Forgive us of all of our sins, oh God, and forever keep us in your care. It's in your son, Jesus' name. We pray and ask these blessings. Amen. Amen amen and amen so we are going to begin by uh with our trivia questions like we do every week and i thought this was fun these trivia questions are who said it i will read three familiar passages from the bible and you are to tell me who said it and when once i read the statement if you know the answer Please type it in the bottom of your phone like we always do. And that way we will know that you were watching this morning. So the first, who said it question. Who said this in the Bible? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Very familiar scripture. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who said that? And number two, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Who said that? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Think about it for a minute. Key your answer in the bottom of your phone. Number three, who said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? Very familiar scripture, very familiar. Who said that? So let me repeat them once again. Number one, who said it? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Number two, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And number three, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Okay? Once you know the answer, make sure and key it in, and we would appreciate it very, very, very much. So the subject of our lesson today is, why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? It's taken from Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 
to 23. The book of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. 14th chapter, 22nd through the 23rd verse. If you have your Bibles, please turn to those scriptures and read along with me. I will be reading from the New International Version. Okay, Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffered by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Oh, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Amen, amen, and amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doers of his holy word. I'm sure this is a very familiar story in the Bible when Jesus walked on the water. Very familiar. But I'm going to, um, before we get into today's lesson, uh, give you a little history or, or background that leads up to today's lesson. Let me go back for a minute. I forgot to read our key verse, which says, Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And our lesson objective for today is that the children will be encouraged to trust God and Jesus during difficult times. We want you to be encouraged to trust God and Jesus during difficult times okay chapter 14 of saint matthew the book of matthew opens with the death of john and if you remember john and jesus were first cousins john was the forerunner of jesus christ so he has learned about the death of his cousin john and once he got the news he went off into a secluded place. I mean, where he went where he could be by himself to pray. And Jesus did that a lot. He, he oftentimes went to a solitary place, meaning he went somewhere where he could be by himself to pray. So as he was praying in this solitary place, some people that lived in that town, they saw Jesus. And once they saw him, they started spreading the news. Jesus is here. Jesus is in our town. He's over by the lake. One thing about Jesus, he always drew a crowd. Wherever Jesus went, you can believe a crowd would be there. And so when these people heard that Jesus was there, they started coming towards him. So Jesus, being who he is, such a loving and compassionate God, he didn't leave or try to get away from them. Instead, he went toward them. The scriptures say he had compassion on them and he healed them. I mean, a, a lot of these people, I'm sure they had heard about the miracles Jesus had performed, how he raised the dead and uh, uh, healed the sick. And a lot of these people came because they needed healing themselves. And then some of them came and brought others that needed a miracle to be healed or or needs to be set free or whatever the reason they knew if they could just get to Jesus 
that the, their problems would be solved. So when Jesus saw the people come, he went toward them and he started to healing them. Whatever they needed, he provided for them. And this went on most of the day. And so uh, as it started to get late, the evening time, the disciples told Jesus that, you know, it's getting late. It's time you start sending the people home so that they can go into the villages and get something to eat. But Jesus didn't want to disperse the crowd. He told them, no, why do we have to send them away? Why don't you feed them? And so the disciples told them that, you know, we don't, we don't have any, enough food to feed all these people. We only have two fish and five loaves of bread. And guess what? Jesus said, give it to me. Bring it to me. I mean, who, 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 but, who but God would even attempt to feed a multitude of people with two fish and five loaves of bread? But Jesus said, bring it to me. And so the disciples brought it to him. Jesus took it. He held it toward heaven. He blessed it. He broke it, and he handed it to his disciples. He told the disciples, tell the people to sit down on the grass. And as he blessed it and broke it, he gave it to the disciples, and, and they began to feed the people. That's a miracle. I mean, everywhere Jesus went, he was performing miracles. And he fed five th over 5,000 people because the Bible says the 5,000 don't even include the women and children. So he fed over 5,000 children, 5,000 people. And so once they ate, they were filled, and, and they had food left over. The scriptures say the disciples took up 12 baskets of food from left when they, that they had left over. It isn't, isn't that like God? And so this is how the crowd was together. So it went, after everybody had eaten, um, Jesus told the disciples, y'all go ahead and get in the boat and go on over on the other side of the lake, and I'm going to catch up with you later. So the disciples did as Jesus told them. They got into the boat and started to go across the lake over to another town. And um, Jesus said, I will dismiss them. So as he just started to miss and the people started leaving and going home, Jesus went to went up to um, a solitary place again and he prayed again. You know, and, and, and that should tell us if Jesus prayed as often as he did, then that should let us know that we too must pray. Jesus was God's son. And if Jesus had to pray, then that should let us know that we too must pray. We must have a prayer life. We must pray daily, just as Jesus did. So, as we get into today's lesson, as the people begin to disperse, Jesus went to the crowd, went up, went into the mountains again to pray. And so he, the scripture says that he was there over into the night. It had started getting dark, and by now. The boat has drifted off into the lake. It's you know it's gotten further and further away from the land, and so they they were out really on this boat all night, and so early in the morning the the, the scripture says at the dawn of the day, and another version said around four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came walking on the water. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's nighttime. You can't really see. But you know, you see an image or something walking on top of the water. Can you imagine that? And of naturally, the disciples were afraid. They thought it was a ghost. And I mean, when you think about it, you really can't blame the disciples. But we know God can do anything. Who, who do you know anybody else that's going to walk on the water? No. No, you don't. So, as Jesus was walking toward the boat, they were afraid, but Jesus cried out to them, Fear not. Don't be afraid. It is I. So, Peter, with his bold self, you know, Peter's very outspoken. Peter wanted to say, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, if it's really you, bid me to come out to you and walk on the water. And Jesus said one word, Come. And Peter, so bold, he didn't hesitate. He got out of the boat, and Peter, Peter too, walked on the water. Yes, he did. Peter walked on the water. 
But now as Peter began to walk on the water, going towards Jesus, the waves and the water started to pick up. The wind started blowing real hard, you know, and um, Peter got afraid. And while he was walking, as long as he had his eyes on Jesus, he actually walked on the water. But then when the wind started to blowing and the waves started to rise high, Peter made the mistake of taking his eyes off Jesus and started looking at around him and what was going on and at that instant G uh, Peter started to sink but even in the midst of all that Peter had sense enough to call on the name of Jesus he immediately said Lord save me and Jesus didn't hesitate to do just that he immediately reached down caught Peter by the hand and pulled him up out of the water and they both got into the boat once they got back in the boat the wind calmed down and the waves come down. Isn't that just like Jesus? And now all these other disciples are sitting in the boat looking at what's going on. And when Jesus stepped on the boat and everything calmed down, they immediately worshipped Jesus. And they said themselves, truly, truly you are the Son of God. But nobody can do the things that God do. And you know, the disciples ha have been with Jesus for a long time. They, this was not the first miracle they saw Jesus do. They just saw a miracle feeding the 5,000. Who, who could have done that other than God? And so when they saw this miracle again, they, they, they were just like in awe. They immediately bowed down to, to Jesus and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. There is no If there is ever any doubt, it's cleared up now. Because no man can do the things that you do. But, you know, Jesus oftentimes proved himself to his disciples. They, they were human. And sometimes we, like the disciples, have little doubt. You know, when we look around and we're going through things and it just don't look good with the physical eye. We just don't see how this can be fixed or how we're going to get out of this. It's those times that we must truly put our faith in God. It is faith. What, what, what is faith? What is faith? We know the Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. What what does that mean? What does that mean? To, to try and simplify it. Faith is believing even when you can't see it. If you can see it, then you don't need faith for that that you can see. If you can see how your way is going to be made. If you can see how your bill is going to be paid. You don't need faith for that. But you need faith for those things you can't see. When a bill is due tomorrow, you don't have the money and don't know where to get it from. But you got to have faith that God is going to make a way for you. That's for, for, for what the Bible says, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. We got to have faith to, 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 before we can even talk to God, before we can pray we got to believe that he exists. We got to have faith to believe there is a God that hears us and that he will answer us. Because no one has ever seen God. But because of our faith, we believe that he does exist. We have never seen Jesus. But belief and faith in Jesus is the key to salvation. We must believe that Jesus is God's son. We must have faith in him. We must believe that Jesus is God's son and that he paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. We didn't see it. We didn't see that. But it's through our faith we believe that he did. That's the key to salvation. So, And also we got to believe and have faith that God is with us even during our difficult times. I know sometimes when things are not looking too well and just seems like everything around us just just falling apart. 
it just seems like nothing is going right. You know, sometimes we may have a tendency like, God, where are you? Why am I having to deal with this? You know, it's, it gets hard sometimes because we, because we are saved, because we believe in Jesus Christ, does not mean that we're going to be exempt from difficult times. No, no, it doesn't. If when 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 you start to complain or start to feel like God is not with you or God is not going to answer my prayer, think about what God allowed His Son Jesus Christ to go through. Think about it. I I I had a conversation with God about that one time. I was moaning and groaning about some stuff I was dealing with. And I was like, why, Lord, why? I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. But why am I having to do, go through this? And the Holy Spirit said to me, as clear as I'm saying it to you, you are always moaning and groaning about something. But think about, first of all, he said he went to Job. He said, think about what I allowed my servant Job to go through. Could you handle that? Man, that was a that was a thought question. I was like, oh no. Mm -mm, no, I don't even want to talk myself into that. No. And then he said, even on top of that, think about what I allow my son Jesus Christ to go through. And I mean that kind of gave me a whole nother outlook. I try I try not to moan and groan about stuff now because even in the midst of difficult times, just know Jesus is with you. And that's a good feeling to know God is with us. Even though we get kind of down sometimes, just know God is with us. And Peter, when he walked out on that water, he was looking at Jesus. So he knew Jesus was there. He had he didn't have to doubt that. He knew Jesus because he was looking at him. But then when situation, the water started uh, going up and down the waves and the wind blowing real hard, you know, that, that's, a, that's a sign of a storm, isn't it? Storm coming up. So Peter stopped looking at Jesus and started looking at what was going on around him. And we have a tendency to do that sometimes. It's the devil can distract us. Anything that he can use to distract us, he does it. And any time we take our eyes off of God, it's the devil is distracting us. And, and that's his job. He does that all the time. He wants us to focus on what we're going through. And not focus on the word of God. So when you feel like you're going through some stuff. And just seem like everything that could go wrong. Is going wrong. Just know God is with you. Even in the midst of it. God is right there with you. And you got to trust him. You got to have faith. And believe that he's right there with you. And how do we do that? We have to maintain a prayer life. Remember I told you at the beginning how Jesus went away to solitary places to, play, he, to pray? He did that often. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he went away three times and prayed. And Jesus is our example. We, if, if we're supposed to be Christ-like as Christians. So if Jesus had to pray, what about you and I? Yeah, we have to. And once we develop a prayer life, that increases our faith walk as well. So try and make it a habit to pray daily. It is very, very important to make that a part, make prayer a part of our daily living. Now, um, as Jesus, we must keep our focus on Jesus. Sometimes, you know, when you're going through some stuff, it may drift off Jesus. You know, you may start focusing on and dwelling on your situation. But if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, the Holy Spirit going to bring your focus back on Jesus. And how does he do that? By reminding you by some things that, look, if he brought you through that, remember when you were going through this? If he brought you through that, he'll bring you through this as well. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He's always on point. Always. Even when we start drifting off and, and, and doing things we shouldn't do or thinking things we shouldn't think, the Holy Spirit going to jump right in and tell you, you know you ain't got no business doing that. 
Thank God for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And as I said earlier, for without faith, it is impossible to please who? God. Without faith, we can't please God because we must, first of all, as I said earlier, we must believe. We must have faith that God really exists in order to pray to him and order to have a relationship with him. We must have faith in him by believing that he really does exist. Even though I can't see him, I must believe that he does exist. And also, Jesus can rescue us out of any situation. There is no problem, no situation too hard for God. God can do anything. He can fix any situation. It don't get too big. It don't get too small for God. Just know, whatever situation you're in, whatever you need God to do, God is able to do it. And you need to believe that. Now, you know, as I as I say, let's not beat up on Peter too bad, you know. Because there are moments when we too have had little faith, you know. But, as I said earlier, when we begin to doubt, the Holy Spirit will guide us back, will get us back on point, believing that, if God did it, then he surely can do it again. So, we need to, if you are not praying on a daily basis, I invite you to start doing that today. It's never too late to start a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, our faith grows, um, you know, sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through certain situations to increase our faith. I believe that. I believe that. But we also can, you know, do study the Word, you know, read the Bible. When we read the Bible, God is talking to us. And then when we pray, we are talking to God. So it's a, it's a, you know, back and forth. You talk to God and listen for God to talk to you. So when those little faith moments arise, we will know enough about what the words say to help us to remind us that God is with me no matter what. So as our lesson says, why do you doubt? Sometimes we doubt because of we're looking at things with our physical eyes. And if we have a tendency, when we have a tendency to look at situations with our physical eye, yes, we will doubt. We will doubt looking with the physical eye. That's why it's important that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ so that instead of looking with the physical eye, we can look with our spiritual eyes. And when we look at it with our spiritual eyes, it's a whole different situation. We can see things with the spiritual eye that we can't see with the physical eye. Okay? So, let us remember that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight, meaning we don't have to see it to believe it. We just going to trust God okay so God reminds us to trust in him even when we are afraid God can always help us even when we are afraid just believe that Jesus has all power and he can do anything so that um, does it for our lesson today. Unfortunately, I do not have a craft. I tried my best to make a, um, um, faith of shield, a, a shield of faith, but it, it, it didn't come out right. So, and I did not want to show it to you because it didn't come out right. But if you would like to try it yourself, you would need some cardboard. You need some glue. Um, 
what else did you need? Uh, some scissors, of course. And go online and Google it, how to do, how to make a, a shield of faith. It's, it's, it was, it's not hard, but, you know, I can't draw. But um, the shield of faith, you know, you can use that to block the fiery darts that the, the enemy throws at us. Because, you know, the enemy is always on his job. So, But with that shield of faith, we can block those fiery darts thrown at us. So if you have time, why don't you try and make a, a, one of the shields of faith. And if you do, take a picture of it and put it on our belt of page. I, I would sure would like to see it. So, in closing of our lesson today, I just want to remind you to have faith. Even those times when we may want to doubt, when things don't look good with the physical eye, remember, there's nothing that Jesus cannot do. And remember, we tend to focus on things that arouse our physical senses and draw a conclusion based on what we see or feel, but we can't base God's power based on what we can see. We have to have faith, okay? Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. We hope we have said something today that can encourage you, uh, something that uh, will help you to increase your faith. We would like to offer the plan of salvation and that is, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today will be a good time by faith to receive him as your Lord and Savior. And it's as simple as ABC. A, you need to acknowledge that you are a sinner. B, you need to believe in your heart that Jesus died for our sins, that he was buried. but And on the third day, he arose with all power in, you, in his hands. And see, we need to confess it with our mouth. We need to tell others that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. If you would like more information about salvation, we ask that you will please call the church office at 205-798-0371. Leave your name, a contact number, and someone will definitely get in touch with you. So... We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, God loves you, and so do I.